Hello everyone, this is Piero San Giorgio, author of Survive the Economic Collapse. Today, I am very happy to have with us Anthony Dream Johnson. We had a private... Hey, thanks, Oh. We had to start to discussion about uh, about the name. So Dream is your middle name. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it, big time. Good. It's my it's my honor and pleasure. We've been uh, chatting on uh, and off for for a few uh, for a few months. Uh, I have a, a few thousand, maybe forty thousand subscribers. It's not a lot, but they're great guys. Uh, very, um, you know, they are hardcore followers. They prepare themselves. They would like to know, who are you and what is this great conference you're preparing in Poland? Yeah, sure. So I'm Anthony Dream Johnson. I'm 30 years old. And about 13 years ago, almost 13 exactly, I started this conference for young men called the Under 21 Convention. And basically, I've been doing it ever since. Eventually, of course, we changed the name from Under 21, because I was very young at the time, 17, to the 21 Convention. And this has become what's known as the Woodstock of the Manosphere and the world's ultimate event for men. It's a very comprehensive event for men that focuses on many different topics, that all of it centers around uh, men, masculinity, and fatherhood, and becoming the best version of yourself possible, the best man you can be. So we have speakers like Jack Donovan, the huge, and like many, many others, literally. We have about 140, 150 speakers now, alumni in our history. It's amazing. I mentioned Jack because he's actually the man who, uh, the speaker that recommended you very strongly for our Poland event, which will be our fourth European convention we've done out of, uh, well, it'll be our 17th convention ever. So that'll be the fourth European one. But Jack Donovan is a celebrated speaker, one of our biggest we've ever had. Uh, along with, they also, I, rec I recognize speakers like Dr. Robert Glover, Dr. Sean T. Smith, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. But Jack's been fucking awesome. I first found him in, uh, was it early 2017? The way of men and all that, everything that he does, and I loved it. I was very impressed with what I read. He's very well, very well articulated and very intelligent, and a leader in the manosphere. He kind of sits on the outside of it a little bit, like the edge. But everybody in the manosphere loves Jack Donovan. Well, not everyone, but like the vast majority. <laughs> he has some haters, of course. Everybody does. But he's fucking awesome. I love that guy. I've had the honor to um, write the foreword for uh, all of his uh, French translated books of, of his. So, oh yeah. yeah, he's a friend and a great, great guy, and. Uh, You should check out, and guys who listen, check out my interviews of him. He's he's just awesome. Yeah. He has a great perspective. And hey, probably is your yeah. best movie as well. He thinks Conan, as I do, Conan the Barbarian is the best movie ever. <laughs> I got to see it, actually, man. I haven't seen it. The I'm, old one. I almost watched it. Yeah, the old one, the OG. Not the, I heard the new ones. Is there a new one they're working on yet? The number yeah, three, whatever. yes. <laughs> anyway, um, so the 21 Convention is a conference I've held all around the world at this point. I've held it in Florida. Many times, Orlando. That's we're doing one there this year. There this year too. That's where we started. It was Orlando, Florida, near Disney World, actually. And then we've done it in Texas. We've done it in Sweden. We've done it in London. We've done it in Australia, and now Poland. So it's a conference we keep doing for men, all men over the age of 18, and it's fucking awesome. The guys have the best time in the world. It's a very uh, large event too. It's anywhere from usually 100 to about 230 men. Like the last one Jack spoke at was uh, in October of 2018. We had 230 our biggest showing ever. And it's a four-day conference, not one or two days. It's four yeah. days and nights. We have dinners at night, workshops, all kinds of stuff going on, and speeches all day. If your fans, too, are familiar with the TED conference, uh, the giant, you know, TED, TED, mm -hmm. uh, we're kind of like TED for men, minus the globalism, feminism, and all the insane shit they promote. I hate all that shit, and I'm focused on the truth. And that's what our speakers are focused on, like Jack Donovan, and they do a really good job at it. And so we have two events this year, and the one you're speaking at, which I'm excited for, And decided to have you there is in Poland, Warsaw, and that's July 18 to 21. Excellent, and uh, I hope that a lot of people will will uh, will come, you know, to meet you, to meet Jack, to meet all the other speakers, to meet me, some of them. But for sure, yeah. what's inter what I find interesting because some people ask me, oh well, it's um, it's expensive, you know how people go, they oh we have to spend all yeah. this money to come and say, well first of all, it's a great opportunity to hear those speakers all together and meet them and talk to them. But correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. The cost of fucking up your marriage, marrying the wrong person, <laughs> divorcing yep. and losing half your money, plus the legal expenses, plus yep. the, the, the emotional turmoil to, to see your kids taken away by, 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 the, by a woman that you haven't framed properly and managed properly and, or, or selected properly, yep. the cost is hugely superior to the cost of yep. such a conference where you can learn how to avoid this problem, I, right? 
I agree, and I've I've been through that myself. I had a I have a famous uh, divorce from a couple of years, three and a half years ago now, and uh, that was before I found like the better, the more hardcore elements of the the manosphere, like Jack Donovan and stuff. And it's on YouTube actually. It's a whole speech called "Marrying Medusa." <laughs> yeah, your fans can go check it out. It's pretty, it it's got like four hundred. It's got almost four hundred thousand views now. <clears throat> but I've also, and I actually got away scot free though. I didn't lose any money, which is really rare. That's not normal. Most what's normal is what you just described. Men lose their children, their wives uh, steal their money from them. They, it's all this bullshit of you know the settlements, the alimony. They'll pay these wives that you know treat them like shit, and they'll have to pay them money for twenty years or something. It's crazy. And, you know, I talked to an attendee recently. He, he attended the convention twice in 17 and 2018, where Jack was speaking at. And he actually lost over half a million dollars, he told me. Uh, and he actually ended up, he's a super nice guy. He actually gave me his VIP pass to meet Jordan Peterson in Orlando. And so I know this guy very well. But he told me that. And he said he had wished he had found the convention a lot sooner and he was a young man. Because he was like in his 50s at this point. He's older. Yeah. So I know exactly what you're talking about. And you're right. That's normal. And there's reasons for that all throughout America and the West and, and throughout the world. You know, the courts are systemically biased against men and fathers, so they get screwed, and it sucks. And we're trying to change that at a personal level, like you're saying, to make good choices. But also, if we can then spin that eventually someday into the culture, into the legal system, that's great, too. That's injustice, and that's, that needs to stop. I hate that shit. So, um, journalists will say that uh, it's a group of uh, women haters. What do you have to say about that? <clears throat> I say it's complete bullshit, and we love women very much. In fact, we love them so much, we're willing to challenge them and criticize them in public when they fuck up. Men who say they love women who are just beta pussies, mm. they don't love women at all. They're just little cowards. We call them vichy males, like the vichy French. They're traitors. These like male feminists and all this shit. They don't even like women. They hate women. They're little uh, conniving schemers yes. trying to like play the friend and shit. Those guys are losers, and they're haters, and people who call us women haters, it's complete nonsense. I have sisters, a mother, aunts, uh, you know, I've had plenty of girlfriends at this point. And the idea that we hate women or I hate women or speakers like Jack Donovan do is fucking delusional. I hate all that crap. I agree. So yeah, it's just total, total bullshit slander. I completely agree. Now, I, maybe my audience doesn't know, but, um, and, and we can, we can, you can explain the concept. I've yeah. been repped pilled now for about a year, a year and a half. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> on my personal, on my personal life, I suddenly discovered and said, oh, I had this oh shit moment uh, yes. listening to you guys, reading the books that, uh, that you guys uh, talk about. And, and suddenly I realized that there is another universe that I never fathomed. And yeah. some of the things I've done in my life were okay and they were right in, in that mm -hmm. process, but by pure chance and by pure nature. But a lot of things I've been doing in my relationships and even in my marriage are completely wrong. <laughs> are completely yeah. wrong. It's, uh, and potentially leading to disaster. So I'm changing a lot of things. Can you yeah. explain to, to our audience, what is this idea of red pill? Sure. So the red pill is kind of like a, a, like a big concept that we use for the truth about men and women and how we interact, especially sexually in relationships, whether it's for one night or for 20 years in a marriage or something like that. And so we use the red pill as opposed to the blue pill. The blue pill is what you know, young men are taught, and even kids, from the, when they're little children up to teenagers and then young men and even older. The blue pill, is, as, the, as opposed to the red pill, is a collection of bullshit lies. All the stuff feminism tells you about how you got to be, you know, like happy wife, happy life. Like all this, like this uh, equalism bullshit where they say men and women are equal in everything ever, no matter what, which is just biologically delusional. Like it doesn't make sense. They're not just talking about like political rights when they say that, for example, that blue pill lie. They mean like everything, which is just nonsense. The red pill, though, as opposed to the blue pill, the blue pill being that feminist Disneyland bullshit. The red pill is the truth. It's the truth about men and women that's based in evolutionary psychology and it's based on observations of real life. Whether it's pickup artists going out to a bar picking up a girl and banging her in the car, you know, or the bathroom or something, or it's building a relationship where you're you're a leader and you're a man and you're masculine. Just yeah. like Jack Donovan talks about. Yeah. I, I've never done that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, no, it's not it's true. Yeah, but but, but <laughs> The red pill applies to any kind of relationship you're going to have with the woman. It's it's a truth about how what she really wants and what uh, and what you want as a man, and then owning up to that and, and you know falling into that. Basically, it's the red pill is, is living in alignment with your nature as a man yeah. and understanding how women are going to do that too, whether you like it or not. Yes. And also how women there's not a conspiracy or anything, but women typically don't want men knowing these truths. They don't want these beta males and stuff. Uh, they want if they do want men to do that, they want them to figure it out on their own. They want guys to like just get it, is what they say, right? This, this stuff like that. Or they have sex with a the guy real quick. They go, oh, it just happened. 
So they want men to figure this out, but they're not, they don't like it being in the public. And even at a much larger, larger scale, men who understand, who understand women, who understand themselves as men, they're very powerful. And that's dangerous to people and to organizations and governments who want to control men and control culture and do very fucked up collectivist things. So men who are red pill aware, men who are masculine, men who are in command of their own lives and living it the way they want, that's dangerous to you know, establishments, whether it's a feminist establishment or the media establishment or the political establishment or whatever. So that's what that I, I think. I hope that helps your fans understand. I'll check the comments too, though, and see sure. if I can answer more if they ask questions. So that means that um, it's not about hating women. It's not about being alone. It's not about uh, men going their own way necessarily. It's about understanding why women behave and are the way they are and why men yes. should behave the way men should behave. Yeah, and understanding why this has been, you know, screwed up. It's like, why? Yes. Why don't you just know this? Why isn't this? Why doesn't everyone know this? Why are people opposed to you thinking this way and asking questions? Uh, so that's that would be the blue pill. It's like very oppressive, uh, you know, feminist crap. But the red pill is based on truth and it's focused on truth no matter what. Now, many of my uh, readers that are listening have read my third book. is about uh, how women. Uh, prepare for disasters, um, collapses, um, economic mm. downturns, and things like that. And I've interviewed a lot of women who are, who are doing the job. Most don't, and I never understood why at the beginning. And now that I'm red-pilled, I, mm -hmm. I start to understand why. They, they will get with the winners, they, or at least that's their strategy, consciously or not. Mm. But, um, well, I, can, um, I can add a little bit to that, too, so, that women are not – women throughout history, like Jack will probably talk about in his books specifically – Women have never been focused on like physical security and territory and stuff like that. They're focused on raising children, yes. babies, nurturing, collecting food, sharing all the resources for stuff like that. Men are focused on territory, defending, maybe going on offense, going to war, uh, security. Even in your, in your home as a father, you said you have four children. Yeah. I can guarantee you that you're naturally more inclined to focus on locking the doors, knowing where weapons are at, knowing what to do if someone breaks in the house. Your wife, the mother of your children, just doesn't think like that. No. She can if she chooses to, but it doesn't come naturally to her. Yes. For you, it does. Absolutely, so. absolutely true. And uh, and this is um, this is why people who are in my in my field or interested about prepping and or survival, they should really be interested by this conference. And uh, and that's why yeah. I'm very happy to go. The um, yeah. I, I I'm going as a as a as a recently red pill to learn. Uh, of course, yeah. I, I, you, you will tell us a little bit why, why, you, why you ask me to come. Uh, yeah. and, and I'm sure I can contribute, of course. But, uh, but what's interesting is that um, even, even, even as being part of the audience at some, for most of the conference and talking with other people that I'm, I'm happy, I would be eagerly meeting there, um, there's a lot about this nature, this profound, you, you mentioned uh, um, behavioral uh, evolution. Uh, mm -hmm. We are the way we are because it's it's super efficient, because it's it's a survival thing. We survive by bringing our genes to the next generation, but we also by making sure that we protect our children, our tribe, our women, our and and all of what you describe right now is forbidden to us men by the culture we live in. We are not yeah. allowed to protect anyone. We are supposed to be weak and and submissive. And so what's yeah. happening is that. And this is something a lot of men complain that because we are becoming a woman and because we are submissive and because we are white knights, I mean, it's disgusting, the white knight attitude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, yeah, the white knights. it's horrible. I mean, no woman wants a guy like that. And yet that is yeah. what they tell us. They tell us they want us, but then yeah. they fuck Chad. That's because right. no one That's wants right. to fuck a, bit, a beta uh, unless you get old and you can't find the new Chads anymore, new alphas anymore. Yeah. And, and this I is like the, to say that women yeah. see three genders in the human race. They don't see two like we do. We see men and women. Women, I don't believe, do that. They see men, they see women, and they see betas. Yeah. So they, unlike, like, we'll look at women and we'll decide if you want to have sex with them or not, regardless of what you're going to do, sure. right? But it's not as deep as they cut. When they look at men, they evaluate, is this guy an alpha or a beta? Is he a breeder or is he like a, like a workhorse, like a plow horse? So we call it alpha fucks or beta bucks, alpha seed, beta need. And I believe deeply that's how women naturally view men. And it doesn't make them evil or wrong or anything. No, no, no. It's just what comes naturally to them. And uh, it's very d divisive for them, though. Like, they really categorize men like this. And most men, at least in the West, are not in any way alpha. They don't, they don't, I mean, especially now, I mean, when men are becoming effeminate because of multiple waves of feminism, 
it's getting really bad, obviously. You're seeing it throughout the West, Canada and America. But even, you know, in ancient times and stuff, not all the men were going to be alpha, or not all men understood. They didn't understand the women and how to operate and interact, interact with them in a way that was masculine and very healthy. In my personal opinion, I think beta behaviors for men are very unhealthy, and alpha behaviors are much more healthy and productive and, and basically make you happy and her. Yeah, and it doesn't mean that you are necessarily a pickup artist. It doesn't mean that you're necessarily, uh, you know, a, a macho <laughs> asshole. Uh, although yeah. women like that, women like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, but certainly yeah. certainly you can be a serious guy. You can be a you know a, a decent, hardworking. Um, even I guess for some people, religious and and so on. And, and at the same yeah. time, providing the right frame and keeping your wife or your girlfriend in the frame that allows both her and you to be happy. Yeah. Yeah, you're keeping her where she wants to be. Like, deep down, that's what she really does want. But you did also, also ask why I wanted you to speak. Sure. So when Jack Donovan brought you up, um, I hadn't heard about you before, but he brought you up and recommended you very strongly. And when you mentioned you were like a survivalist expert and focused on that, I was like, oh, hell yeah. So first of all, I, I believe very strongly that understanding these ideas and how to take care of yourself in a disaster, whether it's a hurricane or economic collapse or a riot or anything in between, or even much more serious situations, Should at the fan or, you know, the end of the world kind of stuff, right? Titawaki was the old acronym. Yes. These things are actually very masculine. They're, they're important to understand. And I'm not surprised if you actually you probably have probably a lot more male uh, audience members than women. Yeah. Like I said, women just don't focus on it. They should, but, you know, they don't. Men do, though. And I think it's very masculine to be able to take care of yourself if something bad happens. The government fails, police fail, law enforcement, riots, all kinds of stupid shit can happen. I live in Florida. I mean, we have hurricanes that are really serious pretty consistently. So I've, I've, for a long time, I've been, you know, I'm nowhere near where you're at, but I do care about these issues and I care about it to the extent of my own life, as well as advocating them with having a speaker and then filming it in speeches and broadcasting that to millions of men. Our videos, by the way, so we operate like Ted, so your speech will eventually go out free to the world. No. The, your fans should come to meet you and talk to you. They'll have dinner with you, they'll hang out, ask you questions for like days. And all the speakers, it's amazing. But the speeches we film, eventually we put them on YouTube and they get millions of views. Because I want to raise awareness on these issues and help men understand and get educated. Yep, no, no, makes sense. Yep. And um, and uh, of course, I'm, it's still early to tell you what I'm planning to talk about. But certainly, for yep. me, you know, a, a, a real man uh, protects his family, which means yep. his woman, his children, but also protects his tribe. Whatever you define tribe, whether the tribe it's uh, it's uh, the ten people, your ten neighbors, or uh, your ten best friends, or Uh, the nation you live in, your country, depends yeah. depends how you define it. In today's I, today's world, it's very difficult to define that because, and we that's Jack Donovan's amazing input yeah. is that we need to create our tribes. But I agree very very strongly. By the way, protect your tribe. But to protect your tribe, it means means to protect against what? And this is where it becomes very very um, muddy because. If you listen to the media, you have to be scared about uh, eating sugar, eating, eating salt, uh, having uh, you know crime, and, and so you're you're getting defocused. You don't you don't you have threats everywhere, and the fear that is put into us by the media and the modern life is yeah. is very difficult to manage because you you one day you fear something, another day you fear something, and they say oh there's going to be war with Iran and with Russia and with yeah. and oh so, in America right now we have. Uh, Alexandra Cortez or whatever her name is she's yeah. screaming the world's gonna end in 12 years like she's fucking just making shit up like it's crazy yeah exactly she's, global you know, warming nuts. and all that hysteria hysteria yeah. so um, what men and smart men especially need to do is to think okay what are the risks in the future the real risks and start yeah. to make you know a SWOT analysis and start to make a plan so I've done all this for people in my, in my books and, um, and this is what I, I talk about a lot is How you prepare your strategy? What makes sense in a reasonable, non-crazy way? Because often you've seen, especially the media portrays preppers and survivalists in some yeah. kind of crazy way that really never existed. I've never met someone who lives in a bunker, who lives in a in a in a in a, in a, in a wood cabin. In, in, up in the in, up in the well, mountains, which it's, is full of it's guns. It's like we were and, it's like we were talking about before we went live on the recording. Like anything establishment, they hate. I think the establishment, duh, like they hate the truth. Of course. Like what's true is that it's important to take care of yourself and think long term about really, really serious consequences and disasters that can happen. Natural disasters happen, like I think, literally all over the world. Like where can you live without a natural disaster happening at some point? Well, It's I, nowhere, I, I imagine. I can tell you the stats in France, but for example, in France you yeah. have um, you have a fire in uh, in a house, 
starting every minute. So in the US, wow. it must probably be every 10 seconds. So, yeah. so, so that means that, you know, forget the end of the world. <laughs> Think about your house burning down. Are you prepared for yeah. that? Do you have money on the side to, 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 yeah. to take it over? Uh, do you have yeah. uh, a bag with some clothes and some money and, and, uh, to, 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 for you and your family, just in case you have to get out of your house just now, right yeah. now? Yep. You know, this is mundane thinking, but it's part of the strategy. It's not about yep. killing, killing zombies and all that. You know, it's a, uh, you know the, the movies have put an imaginary um, scenario into our heads. And, and hey, it's inter it's, it can be entertaining. It's fun. But it's not the reality. I mean, we're not going to have a, you know, a massive meteorite hitting the earth tomorrow and people are going to eat them, eat each other to survive. I mean, yeah, this is, this is bullshit. We, what we yeah. want... Is to understand. I, mean, okay. I, can, I can tell you in Florida that I've seen every year the summer comes with hurricanes, right? Yeah. Every year the hurricane gets closed. Everybody freaks out and they scramble because <laughs> they, they have exactly. nothing. They have no water, no food, no guns, no ammunition, no supplies, yeah. no batteries, no flashlights. They have not even the basic stuff. Yeah. Nothing. Exactly. Nothing. It's amazing. So, it's dangerous. So men think about these things. Real men think about these things. Real men protect their own, protect their community, protect their tribe. Yeah. And, um, and therefore... It's linked to what you guys are doing, how to be a real man, how to get Damn right. to go back to being a real man. Because our grandparents, I mean, if, if my grandfather was still alive and could read my books, he would say, I mean, people are, are reading this? This is obvious, right? We, we all have plans for war, <laughs> for, for starvation, for invasion by foreigners. By, we, have, we had this, they all had that and because... They went through it. They went through war. They went through invasions. They went through. They had to fight. They had to. They have riots. They had uh, all this stuff in the 18s and, and 19s and, and early 20th part 20th century, and yeah. um, but now this has been forgotten because it's too easy, yeah. and we have created this uh, and indeed very feminized um, society where everything has to be solved. The government, the, the nanny state, has to provide everything. So we have this false, very false sense of security yeah. which make us even more weak and unprepared so that when something happens you don't know what to do and you're going to suffer and this yep. is not and then you look you look like shit to your wife and children because they look at you and say dad or my husband why haven't you prepared and you say oh, yep. because I didn't think about it I don't know or I thought it could never happen well now it happens so what do you do so you look yeah. like shit to your kids and, and, and your wife and every, or your... Well, and what happens is, what is you want. face the consequences of your choices is what you're going to face. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and this is, this is you, you're very correct in saying that the concept of responsibility is a paramount uh, moral imperative for men to be perceived as good men by their peers. And, and this is the concept in, in Jack Donovan's book that is amazingly accurate is that you don't care what, uh, what people you don't know or foreigners, as in foreigners from your tribe, think about you. In fact, I never care. However, if your peers say you failed us, you, are, you have not had the excellence, the skill sets, you are, you, are, you are not as good as you could, you are making us all weaker and more fragile and therefore more prone to disaster and the consequences of the disaster. So, so we need to help each other. And this is what I think is great in your conferences is that men who think a bit alike, they meet and they challenge yeah. each other and they will push each other with, yes. with um, tough love sometimes, with friendship yep. perhaps. But suddenly we, we improve because I'm surrounded by, by weak people all my life around me. Unless I create yeah. my tribe, which I'm doing. But I, yeah. I'm surrounded by weaklings, and, and these, so our, I can count this them. Is a hunt, this is a thousand percent correct. This is what we have at every conference. It's a tribe, essentially, a meeting of the tribe of men who are following the conference on the internet through the videos and the websites and what we, all the you know all the stuff. And then we meet, and it's not just like a day or like a, a, an afternoon. It's like day three, four, or five days sometimes. Exactly. The one Jack was at last was that was actually a five day conference. It was huge. And, and this is why it's, it's, it's very um, strong, very beneficial. This is why it costs something, right? You need to yeah. people who pay that uh, thousand, whatever is the cost, they get yeah. the hotel, they get some of the meals, I presume. So, so uh, the hotel is on them, but they okay. get they get meals though, yeah. Okay. And they get they get access to the videos too early. They get like a premium membership for all the videos, right. the recordings. It's all included. The, and I want to say too that I'm very yeah. proud of our the price of our conference. People sure. thought expensive. I say it's a compliment. 
because that means it's not a piece of shit. Shit, no, you, you, you pay in America. We say you get what you pay for. Yes. So you pay right. cheap shit, you get cheap shit. You buy nice stuff, you typically get nice stuff. And I've built the best conference in the world, in my opinion, for men. And I'm very proud of that. It's extremely good. I'm like, I love Steve Jobs and the, the integrity and the intensity he had for his product creation and services and stuff. And I've taken that as best as I can, studying him and done it with my company for almost 13 years now. So what we do is amazing, and every, all your fans will love it, 100. percent I look forward to it. I'm excited as a little kid. So, uh, so I look forward to go to remind us what are the dates? It's um, July, uh, yeah. June, July. Yeah, it's July 18th to the 21st, 2019, in Warsaw, Poland. And they can get tickets. You probably have the link on your video, but they can yes. also go to the 21 conventionorg Sure, we like orgies or not? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, the, I put the link downstairs yeah. and uh, just just under the description. And um, yeah. guys who are listening, you know, just come. First of all, it's in Poland. I mean, what what's more to say? It's a fantastic country. It's full of great yeah. men, great women. The men are men. The women are women. Uh, it's it's a beautiful city. I, I know it well. You know that I know it well. I've done a few shows in Poland. Yeah. Uh, my book is coming out in Polish soon, by the way. And um, so I'll be around in Poland in, in the next uh, year. And um, and again, this conference can save your life, can save a lot of money for you. And by the way, literally, a lot of people get shoot themselves. They get suicidal after they have a bad yeah. divorce, after they have a heartbreak. Um, it's, My um, little cousin killed himself just a few months ago, right before the conference Jack spoke at, 20 years old. Yeah, he had a breakup and then it's really he sad. on a football field up in New Jersey. Yeah. It's really sad. No, no woman is worth uh, that. It's yeah. uh, and and no relationship is worth is worth. I that. mean, I'll say this, man. I've I've been in the manosphere studying this content since I was 17 years old, since I was a teenager, a kid, and I would probably be dead without it. Of course, I was so blue pilled, indoctrinated with stuff growing up that, and a lot like a lot of men that do kill themselves and stuff. Suicide's high among men, five times higher than for women. And I, I saw my cousin, little cousin, die, and he could have. I was like, that could have been me or my little brother. Yeah. I have a little brother that age yeah. too. In, uh, to give you some stats, in uh, just in France, it's in the nearby country, um, they basically have one uh, military or uh, police guy uh, killing himself uh, per, per day. And, wow. um, and most of the time, okay, it's a multiple factor, obviously, uh, but most of the time it's after the wife uh, or girlfriend leaves them. And then yep. the, 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 all, the, all the rest of the shit piles up, And, 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 and a few of them, unfortunately, um, uh, kill themselves. And, and it's a yeah. disaster. So this conference can save your life. I mean, I'm, I mean it seriously. And, uh, and save you a lot of money. And, uh, and, and, and also, you know, get this tribe going. Why not come, you know, you, you have two or three best friends. Come together. Come the three of you. Oh, this I is should the mention best. that all, all the men who attend, they can bring a friend at half off, 50% off once they buy a ticket. So they or, can bring a friend half off. Yeah. Or if you're an if you're an old fart like me, I'm I'm, I'm 47. Bring your kid or something. My kid is yeah. too small yet, but but uh, yeah. but bring bring your son. Bring your son. We had, get them. We had sons bring fathers. We had a fatherhood conference recently, our first one, and we had sons bring fathers and fathers bring sons. It was really cool. Yeah. Say so yeah, 100. Makes sense. Okay. So I'll see you in uh, Poland. It will be uh, yeah. awesome. It will be great. I'm gonna prepare yes, my sir. my speech. And uh, we'll sort out the details afterwards. Uh, okay. Thanks a lot. I'll put all the links um, just under the description. And um, I hope to see you guys, um, many of you. Take care. Thanks for having me on, man. See Ciao. you soon.